Hey, what's going on guys? Flick here and welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 17 career mode with Southampton. We're coming off one of the more eventful episodes of the series where Jordan Ibe likely scored the best goal I'll score in FIFA 17. If you missed it, go ahead and watch it because you will not be disappointed. But we'll start off today by taking a look at the league table. We're top of the table with 34 points purely due to goal differential. Leicester right behind us. So it is crucial for us to win our matches today in the Premier League. We have three of those matches to play, starting off at home against Burnley, then on the 25th, we'll play Arsenal, and closing things out, we'll have another home match against Middlesbrough. Since we are nearing the end of December, we'll be getting into the January transfer window in the next episode, and I have added a few more players into the transfer shortlist, courtesy of your guys' comments from the previous video. And again, I'll reiterate that I'm looking for a right mid or a left mid, just someone to provide a little bit more depth into the team. If we can get an 80 plus rated player that'd be perfect but of course overall rating doesn't necessarily justify that a player is good we've seen that firsthand through a couple players in this save now with our game against arsenal in just two days i think our best move right now is to play our second team and then hope that they can get the job done that way we can have our first team for the arsenal fixture i've still got kevin volland in here because he has some of the best stamina in the team so the plan is i'll play him for the first half and then for the second half we can bring on Thierry ambrose as well as any of these substitutes who have stepped up on numerous occasions the Burnley lads are having an average season, sitting 14th place in the Premier League, but one player I think we need to watch out for is Gray. He's a quick striker, and he's got some decent finishing ability. If we don't watch out, he can score some goals. Some nice build-up play already, and we've got Nathan Dyer seeing the run made by Aguirre. He'll look to send in the cross, and maybe we can get the first goal of the match. It's Kevin Vaughn to rise up, and I'm glad I started him. What a cross sent in as well by Aguirre, and that's the perfect start for us. 1-0 within two minutes. Corner kick for Burnley, and these are the kind of chances we need to watch out for. They're not going to create a lot of build-up play, so they're going to look to score on set pieces. But here we are on the counterattack. It's Nathan Dyer. Doesn't have a lot of support, and he loses hold of possession. Now it's Bamford. Great tackle by Hoiber. Easily collected. This could be a chance for us to attack. We've got Aguirre, who sent it across earlier. Inside, we've got Nathan Dyer. He's going to look to place one across. Needs to be a drag back by Jordan Ibe. He gets by one defender. Looking to go cross body. Got the shot off, and we're still with it. And eventually, I think it will end up with a corner kick. We're just going to loft this one in. Jose Font has won several headers this season. This time, though, Davies wins the header. And Aguirre tried to get there instead of Andre Gray. Gray wins out. We're still on it, though. Hoiber, again, not the best pass. And it's Burnley on the counterattack. It's just turned to an end-to-end -end game. Now Bamford over to Davis. Playing it inside and an interception by Aguirre. Here we go on our counterattack. And we've got Kevin Vaughn finally making a run. And this will be the last stretch of play before we end this. That might be a penalty. And it is a penalty for us. 34 minutes into the game. Burnley have collapsed. And if we can convert this, it should be 2-0. Kevin Vaughn to take it. I'm not looking to do anything too fancy. Just off to the left. And bearing it. It's saved by the keeper. And what is that for a rebound? Kevin Vaughn just had to tuck it away. Maybe we hurried it. But in my opinion, Kevin Vaughn needs to do better. Still pushing on though, Vaughn looking to make up for his earlier mistake, gets tripped up once again, and that could very well be a setting off for the Burnley player. I'm not sure if he got a yellow on the penalty kick. The ref is walking up, and I think he's about to be sent off. You can just tell by these kind of animations, but if they could just cut to the chase and see what does happen, it's a straight red card, and surely we're going to win this game. Here are the stats. Burnley have not registered a shot on target, but with us having the lead, I will make the one change that I promised. Kevin Vaughn coming off. And it will be Thierry Ambrose coming on. I think later on the match, I'll bring on Iskro for Dyer and Rodriguez for Ibe. Romeu. It's Rodriguez. We've got Ambrose making the run. And he's just going to look to use his pace and whip one into the far post. We've got a runner. And I think that's Sally Uchan providing the option. He'll get there. But he cannot get it on frame. Can't believe his finishing. Nice ball to set up Ambrose. Has one defender to beat. And he'll use his skill to get by. Has an option in the middle. He'll go to the far post. Great attempt. Rodriguez keeps it in play. Eventually falls to Iskro. Just needs to shoot. And we just cannot get the shot on target. Burnley somehow have only conceded one goal. 
Here's Hoybear on the ball. Finding Romeu and tons of space on the right. This has to be the chance for us to score a second. Aguirre looking for the low, driven cross. Gets fouled in the process. And that's another penalty kick. And as if one red card wasn't enough, Mee's been sent off. And now it's down to nine men for Burnley. You know what? I'm going to let Sally Uchon take this penalty kick. He needs a boost in his confidence. And we're going to actually go right down the middle. No if ands, or buts about it. Straight down the middle. Keeper goes the wrong way. And it's 2-0 for Southampton. That is much deserved. Oh, this might be a third. And a second for Sally Uchon. Instead, he'll do a great layoff pass. Ambrose needs to finish this far post. And that is three for Southampton. We need to factor in goal differential. It's played a case currently as the only reason we are first place is due to goal differential. So we're not going to let up yet. Honestly, it seemed like Burnley played themselves. Getting two men sent off and not even registering a shot on target. You're never going to win a game. Man of the match, though, could go to a number of players. But it's Sally Uchon. So happy for him. And if he keeps on playing like this, maybe I'll have second thoughts about selling him in January. Another monthly scouting update coming through from Romania and the return of the unknown player who will be passing by once again for the second month. But we got a 94 potential player here. We'll see if his overall it does stack up and he's pretty low in the value so I'm actually going to skip him and we won't be signing him up to the Youth Academy because space is limited for the Southampton Youth Academy. We have so many developed players who I think I'll be promoting in January. It's time to turn our attention to Arsenal who seem to have turned around their season now up to sixth place still not able to break into the top five. A win here would do wonders for them but we need to keep our shape and hold off Leicester. Our strategy of using our second team has worked to perfection because our first team is fully rested. I'm just hoping that Arsenal didn't take the same approach and they have a tired first team. Not sure how that factors in with the CPU, but I'm fully confident in this side. Let's get the job done and keep up our winning form. It's always fun to play a match here at the Emirates, but this Arsenal team, I'm not sure what they've done, but they've signed so many Youth Academy players and now promoted them to the first team that they lack the quality in their first team. There's Redmond on the ball. Going to use a Berber spin to cut this one inside and send it through. If only Kevin Vaughn continued his run, but he does well to win it back. And maybe he can send it across instead. We'll work this one around and try to find Victor Kovalenko. We know he's got great long shot abilities. Schneiderlin playing in the middle. It's going to be Kovalenko. The finesse shot just going low and hard, but not on target. Throwing chance for us. Bertrand will play this one to Schneiderlin. And now to Victor Kovalenko trying to find Kevin Vaughn and turn the defender. He's gotten by him. Just a finesse shot on the near post. And there it is. It's 1-0 for Southampton. And the goals continue to keep flowing in. And it looks like Kevin Vaughn very well may have found his form for us. Oh, that's a great split. And Ward Prowse using some nice dribbling. He'll play to the far post. And it's Victor Kovalenko providing the option. That is some beautiful build-up play. And this is what... I love to play career mode as just some nice patient passing and finding the simple through ball calm finish. Kieran Gibbs could send it across. Instead, he'll find Alexis. Probably the only standout player in this Arsenal team. But that will not be testing Jordan Pickford, who has been steady as always in this game as well as the previous one. Well, he didn't register a shot on target in the Burnley game. A solid first half there from the lads, registering five shots, two on target, and matching Arsenal's possession. Not looking to make any changes going to the next 45 minutes. Arsenal haven't done much, and I'm hoping it stays that way. Finally, a chance for Arsenal. Jenkinson just needs to send this in, and that he will. Pickford able to collect, and this is our chance to get a third goal. Arsenal have not done anything. In the last 20 minutes or so, they've just been trying to break through our back line, but we're playing ultra defensive. There's no reason for us to push up because we're in control. We'll use our substitutions to close out this game, and apparently Kovalenko picked up an injury. I wasn't aware of that, but I don't think it's serious because they didn't make me sub him off right away. So instead of Kovalenko, we'll bring on Jake Hesketh. He's really our only proper center attacking mid. Well, him and Tadic, but I have different plans for Tadic. We'll be bringing in for Sofian Bufau. Along with that, we'll bring on Ivan Stepanak, making sure those youth academy players get some action. We're going to switch this. Vaughn spots out the wide open Dushan Tadic and needs to fire this one in. From long range, he'll go crossbody. Great save by Chesney. 
but it's still in play. Vaughn spots out a player in the middle, and Nathan Redmond able to finish it. That's 3-0 against Arsenal. That's another huge victory against the CPU, against the quality side, and I'll tell you guys what, it feels good to be winning matches again, and Kevin Vaughn picking up a 9.2 rating. An update on the Kovalenko injury. It's a little bit more serious than I thought it would be. He'll be out for three weeks with a sprained ankle, but we have a couple options at center attacking mid, so we shouldn't have a problem there. And hey, the transfer window is coming up, and that might be one of the positions I look to fulfill. But let's get into our scouting report from Italy, see if we have any 94 potential talent to add into the team. It's not looking promising and no signings this month. And we are starting to get messages saying that some of our youth academy players want to be promoted into the first team. Jan de Witt being one of those players. Center mid, 18 years old from the Netherlands, has some decent stats already at 80 ball control, which is solid. So with a little bit of training, I think he could see some action in this season. So of course, we'll give him his contract offer and we're going to be offering him a future first team player. Our final game today will be against Middlesbrough, who are surprisingly having a solid Premier League season up to seventh place. And we have increased our gap between us and Leicester City. Now up to two points. I'm looking to make that even more. It's a pretty standard routine for our starting 11 today. I've converted Tadic into our center attack and mid with Kovalenko recovering from his injury. Outside of that, literally no other changes. Here is the Middlesbrough team that has brought them to glory more or less this season. And to be fair, they've got some great players. I've heard good things from Guardi FIFA about Stuart Downing and some of their younger players have improved their potential. Yo, Buffel has absolutely done the Middlesbrough defenders. If he could have just gotten by that last one, that would have surely been a finesse shot to the side of the net. But the Middlesbrough defense has been decent. Oh, that's a great run from Dushan Tadic. Needs to get the finesse shot off. Did that take a deflection? Or was it just not on target? It was not on target. To be fair, he didn't have much time to really get himself positioned. This might be our chance. Volland is making the run. We just need to find him. And I think the pass was a little bit too much, but we still have an opportunity playing it in the middle off the post. So unlucky from Sofian Buffal. Somehow, though, we've hung on to possession. We may get a goal after all. Voland to Tadic. Looking to bang this one cross goal. Great save by Toselli. That's a nice run again, and this time it's Morgan Schneiderlin. He's so clinical in front of goal, but Toselli is pulling save after save, and it's another corner kick for us. Let's send it in. Ward Prowse to the penalty marker. Keeper's coming out as well, and he collects it. What seemed like a tight first half has come to an end, but in reality, Middlesbrough didn't even register a single shot on target, so maybe we're better off than I thought, but I still want to make some changes here at the break. And just looking at who we have available to us on the bench, not sure who to bring on. Harrison Reed hasn't gotten much play time today, so I'm going to substitute him on for Ward Prowse, who got in a pretty tough tackle there towards the end. I didn't show it to you guys, but I don't want to risk any sort of injury for him. Um, other than that, I want to bring on Rodriguez at some point in this game, and Buffal's looking a little tired, but I'll hold off for now. This could be a chance for Middlesbrough. Maybe their first shot on target is coming, but Ruben Semedo, great clearance away. And room for us to run. I think they're pushing forward players. And this is when Kevin Vaughn can get on the attack. This is where he does work best. And he'll get inside the area. Maybe could get fouled. He'll look to sweat this one across. And that'll be a corner kick. Still plenty of time left in this game. But I want to use my two final substitutions right now. And the first one being for Sofian Buffal. He's coming off and Jay Rodriguez coming on the second change. We'll be switching Redmond and Vaughn. Vaughn hasn't gotten much chances in the middle, so I want to move him out wider to the right. And instead of Redmond, we'll be using Thierry Ambrose for the remainder of this game. Yo, this might be the chance. It's Thierry Ambrose who's through the number 13. Has no support in the middle. That's a great tackle by Fry, but Ambrose able to get it back. And now he needs to find help. We'll play in the middle to Rodriguez. Another pass to Harrison Reed. One more. And it just needs to be a finish by Dushan Tadic. Ref, that's a penalty. Not called, though. Oh, great turn. Putting in the middle. And that is a clinical finish. Who is that? Orange boots. That's Dushan Tadic, I'm pretty sure. Or it's Kevin Vaughn. Regardless, though, that was a remarkable run from Thierry Ambrose. And that is Dushan Tadic to finish. This game is starting to get tense, guys. 15 minutes left, and you can tell Middlesbrough are pouring forward players. And we just need to get that second goal for Cushion. Victor Fisher playing it to Rhodes. He'll play it inside. That's an easy save for Pickford. And we'll look to get on the counterattack. We've got a couple players forward, and Ambrose needs to win this header. That he does. 
and just play this one through. Ambrose is onside, and it needs to be a finesse shot from him. Cool, calm, and collected, but he is off. Things got tense there at the end, guys, but we were able to see out the match courtesy of some spectacular play. And just as a reminder, we're still undefeated in the Premier League this season. I don't know how long we can keep that streak, but I want to keep it as long as possible and stay in this first place position. But guys, that will wrap things up for today's episode of the Southampton Crew Mode. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And if you're interested, you can follow me on my socials. Links to those are in the description down below. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you guys again soon.